everyone, and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen, and this is episode 156. If you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer, there's a motorcycle outside my window, and there's nothing I can do about it. But I <laughs> hope you uh, enjoy this episode, uh, and thank you so much for taking a little bit of your um, time out of your week to spend to hang out with me and and talk about all the Arnie things. Um, sorry, I got a little bit distracted with that noise, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, I I have a lot to talk about this week. Um, I will be having a shop update tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at villainvineyarns.com, but I'll leave that to the end of the episode. Um, but I do have some stuff off the needles, so I will just dive right into that. Um, I actually finished my Lanai yarn socks. Yay! Another pair of socks. Um, so yeah, again, this, is, this yarn is Lanai Yarns. Uh, which is her Across the Universe colorway, which is heavily speckled with all these delightful, wonderful uh, colors. Every single color in there that you can think of in the universe, hence the name Across the Universe, right? So basic top down, cup down, uh, fish lips, kiss heel, um, basic sock. So basic socks are technically my go-to projects. Uh, when I don't know what to knit, uh, if I need something just to take with me on a car trip, I always knit socks. I am never not knitting socks. Um, so yeah, after I cast one off, I cast on a new pair right away. So that's where I am with these. So yay, new pair of socks. Um, I did cast on a new pair, <laughs> uh, but I have not gotten anywhere with them. I had a skein of fairy hair, my own hand dyed yarn, what did I do with it? Um, lying around like I usually do. Um, and I was like, you know what? I have not knit with my, with this colorway, and I've been wanting to. Um, so this is my hand dyed yarn, um, fairy hair, which is this subtly. I mean, I mean, it's a bright pink, but like variegated, with light blues, greens, yellows, golds. Um, yeah. So I just I cast on a simple, just one by one ribbing cuff. I think these are going to be a. Um, my favorite sock pattern that uh, I wrote up. It's just a cuff down, uh, reinforced heel and heel turn uh, basic sock pattern. I don't know, but as I'm knitting with this, I don't know if I want this to be a pair of socks. I am kind of leaning more towards a shawl. Like um, I know Molly from a homespun house is knitting uh, or has finished knitting a her uh, come what may shawl by Susan B. Anderson. And I am in love with that shawl pattern. I, I could totally see myself casting that on. Uh, I love that it has a million and one different, no, I'm, not, I'm exaggerating, but several uh, pattern changes throughout. So I know that'll definitely hold my hold my attention um, because lately these days I just feel like my brain is totally ADD. So um, I might just frog these socks. It's okay. I'm not that far into the socks. Um, and just cast on a come with me shawl because I don't know. This is on my Volga base, which is uh, merino nylon cashmere, and it's so soft. So, almost a little too nice to be a pair of socks. We'll see where I get with that. But anyway, um, yeah. So that's all that I have off the needles this week. Uh, I wasn't expecting to have anything more off the needles, although it would be nice. Uh, but I have been putting a major dent in my Verdu shawl um, by Isabel of the Fluffy Fibers podcast. Um, so this is a beautiful shawl pattern. Again, this is my own hand dyed yarn in the uh, succulents colorway, which is this very light uh, tonal mint green, kind of like a, a grayish green, I would say, like a succulent plant, if you're not familiar with them. Um, but yeah, um, I finished the body and now I am on to the knitted board, knit, uh, the applied border. And I am making some serious progress with this. Um, and I know I was knitting, I sadly frogged the Mama Ruffle shawl that I was knitting a while back, uh, and that had an applied border, uh, but that was just, I don't know, it, even though it was a thin lace border, it was just taking forever, and my attention wasn't holding, so sadly I gave that one the axe. But on this applied border, oh my gosh, you guys, this, this is so enjoyable to knit. I would say that it, would t it only took me maybe 15 minutes to knit three repeats, of the applied border. So from here to here, the space in between here is um, only took me 15 minutes to do. So given the time, you could probably bang one of these out, or <laughs> not bang one of them, but um, make some 
pretty good headway uh, on this applied lace border. It's very enjoyable and it's knit, I, I'm smitten with this pattern. I want to knit, I could see myself knitting another one after I'm done with this one because it's so beautiful and so easy um, and just really enjoyable. So um, I am finding obviously that I have to pay attention to uh, the chart repeats um, while I'm knitting this, but it, it's so enjoyable to do, so I don't mind it. Um, and yeah, as I'm, uh, what was I going to say? Um, but yeah, there is a chart, uh, Isabel does give you a chart, but it's also written, written out as well. So if you're not familiar with uh, reading charts, you, you have the written instructions as well. So really enjoying that. Uh, thank you, Isabel, for an awesome, beautiful, beautiful pattern. Um, and if you haven't checked out Isabel's podcast, uh, the Fluffy Fibers podcast, I would highly recommend that you hop on over to YouTube and search it because she's lovely. Um, I always enjoy watching her podcast. I have to finish watching her last episode. Um, I've only had time to watch. I haven't had much time to watch podcasts this week and I feel horrible. I'm so behind. Um, but yeah, I have to finish watching that and I have to finish watching The Fawn Knits, which is another podcast. I know I'm kind of jumping topics here. Um, so The Fawn Knits is another lovely podcast. It's new uh, and Laura is awesome. She has an Etsy shop. She and her husband uh, make these tote bags, project bags, uh, with like tree imprints, and they're really fun. She does different colors, um, and she also makes these fuzzy furry ear hat, uh, animal hats, which I may, this winter, I almost want to treat myself to one. I might have to do it, I don't know. Um, but yeah, she's definitely got a really cool Etsy shop. Definitely check it out. Um, who else do I want to catch up with? There's so many. I know I'm totally blanking. Um, I will post links to all these everything that I've been watching in uh, the show notes. But yeah, so many great new podcasts out there um, that you guys should definitely watch. Um, but yeah, and I apologize if I seem a little loopy or out of it. I did not sleep well at all last night. There was a mosquito in our bedroom <laughs> keeping us awake. And finally, I, I, Dennis was up. He was, you know, he, he was complaining about mosquitoes. And then finally it bit me on the elbow last night and I was itching. And then at like four or five o'clock in the morning, I was up, I had a frisbee in my hand <laughs> looking for this thing and I spotted it and I whopped it and and then I just couldn't fall back to sleep. So I'm a little, I'm a little dazed today. Um, what can you do? But anyway, uh, so yes, this is on the go uh, and I'm using my interchangeable carbons, um, US size six, I believe, yeah, six. So that, there's that and I think I will have enough Yardage. This is how much yarn I have left over. I think well, I will definitely have enough to finish the rest of the body, uh, the rest of the applied border. Um, also on my needles, uh, and I didn't really put much of a dent in this at all this past week, uh, my Cozy Memories blanket. Uh, I, put, I put one square, one square is in, uh, if I can find it. <laughs> Here it is. Um, and this, I believe, is from Sharon of the TV Knitting Podcast, uh, who's also known as Stitch Mistress on Ravelry. I believe this is from her, and I believe that this is Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock Lightweight. Um, I don't know what colorway, but we did a yarn swap a while back. Um, so this was one of the really fun colorways that she sent me. Um, and that's another fun podcast that you should watch uh, if you are not familiar with the TV Knitting Podcast. Um, it's not all about TV knitting and everything, um, like the name suggests. I mean, she does find a lot of inspiration uh, from, or she loves spotting uh, knitwear in TV shows, like some of her favorite series. As do I. I mean, Outlander, for example. There are so, there's so many awesome uh, hand knits in that show. Uh, it's definitely very inspiring. Um, so I, I, as well, like, spotting knitted items in, in TV shows, but that's not the entire podcast. She is an incredible spinner, um, an awesome teacher, um, and she knits beautiful things. So definitely check her out. She's funny too. So um, definitely one of my favorite podcasts. And come to think of it, she has not podcast in a few weeks. So Sharon, if you're watching, I'm going through a little withdrawal. So just so you know, um, but yes, so one square, one square, and of one of many that I have to add to this epic bit of business right here. Um, and lots of ends to weave in. I don't want to think about that right now. But, And the other thing about this, there are so many, not all the squares are going in the same direction. And at this point, like right here, I don't know if you can see, 
I've, I've given up caring. It doesn't bother me. Um, I kind of like the fact that a lot of the scores are going in different directions. Um, it just adds another element of interest in my mind. So, you know, and look, I can fold it up. Yay, it's, it's technically a blanket once you can fold it. So I am making progress with that. Um, so yeah, I mean, let me check. Let me check my show notes. What else do I have to discuss? Um, okay, so spinning. Uh, the epic uh, summer socks spackle is underway. I have chosen my fiber, um, and many of you are very excited. You've been chatting away in the Ravelry thread, uh, which if you have not joined yet and you are interested in knitting, in spinning and knitting a pair of socks along with us, uh, please hop over to the Yarngasm Ravelry thread where there's a chatter group and a non-chatter group for prize entries. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I had my um, mulberry fibers on the wheel uh, these past couple of months or what have you. And I just, I, there's silk content in there and I was thinking, I really don't want that to be a pair of socks. I want it to be a shawl, plus it's a solid color. Um, so I, I went stash diving and pulled out this lovely braid of um, gourmet stash, which I've been coveting, uh, her broken ornaments colorway. Um, on her, st I can't remember the name of the fiber, but there's Stellina in here and it's Superwash Merino. Um, but this was one of her Christmas colorways and I've just been hoarding it and hoarding it. And the fact that it's all these cheerful colors and it's super washed merino, I was like, you know what? This has got to be a pair of socks um, because it, it just makes me happy uh, to look at as, as it does. So it's Christmas in July, everybody. Uh, I put this on my wheel. I haven't made a lot of progress on it, but it's spinning up to Lula. Um, it's spinning up very um, barber poly, if that's, a, if that's a term. When you talk about spinning, don't mind this one. This is just kind of leader over here, but just right here, it's been, um, it's been spinning up. So I'm really enjoying it. And some of you have been asking me about spinning merino. Uh, if, you're, if you are a new spinner, you might find that merino is um, a little slippery, or it's just, you know, especially if it's combed top, uh, my advice, if you're having a little trouble with that, is just to draft it before you spin it. Just make sure you have that braid, draft it out a little bit, and then try spinning it. Um, that might make it a little bit more manageable, as that's what I've been doing uh, with this fiber. So, really excited about that. Um, it will be going, uh, the, uh, the sock speckle will started on July 1st, and it will be running all the way until September 1st. So two whole months to spin and knit. Is that right? Yeah, Jillian? Yeah, I believe. Yes, yes, okay, sorry. Math issues. Um, <laughs> so you will have to two full months to spin and knit a pair of socks. Um, so yeah, share your photos, your progress, and I, can't, I look forward to seeing what everybody uh, does. Um, so I, I'm not doing tour de fleece this year. I don't think I've ever done tour de fleece. I, it's just, there are some things that are just so hard to keep up with. Um, like Stash Dash and Nanny Swimo. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm horrible when it comes to knit alongs, spin alongs. I've got to go at my own pace. Um, so yeah, <laughs> too much, too much going on. Um, anyway, but other spinning, uh, last night, if I can find, I'm like looking, I have so much stuff in front of me. It's redonkulous. Um, and I just said redonkulous. <laughs> I need more sleep. Um, what did I do with? Hello. Okay. Oh, here we go. So last night, um, we, me and Dennis, me and the Mister, were watching TV like we do, and I decided to pull out my Golding spindle, uh, at, which is currently ha uh, has some hobbledehoy batlings on it, or a batling, um, which is showing up really lovely on the camera, surprisingly. Um, but it's just got some silken oil in there. It's this dark, dark wine burgundy color. Um, and it has some Stellina in there and, you know, just multicolored silk and oil. Um, so it's gonna spin up really tweety. And I've missed spinning on my Golding. It's been a while and I just, I forget how enjoyable it is to spin on this. It's a lightweight, um, I want to say micro, I don't remember, but it's, um, I think a two inch, 
uh, ebony top. I don't know, I could be wrong. Um, and it's very lightweight and it's spinning up very, the fiber is spinning up very thin. Um, but yeah, just super enjoyable. Uh, just really nice just to sit there and spin and watch, watch TV. We were watching Jimmy Fallon and I got a lot done. So um, this is one. And then I, I've been keeping the little um, batlings in my Stitched by Jesso Lou bag on my, in my lighthouse bag because that's where I, where, where I kept them while we were in Cape Cod with lobsters on the inside. <laughs> um, but yes, I have this one left. And then I also have this really cool blue one left. Um, I may have more. I think I could have sworn I had more. I just took these with me to Cape Cod because I knew I wouldn't obviously would not get that much spinning done. Um, and these have been pretty much just going into my my sock blanket. Um, I don't know if I can show you one of the other battlings. I showed this to you before, but just in case you're curious about how it knits up, um, this is a light blue one that I that I spun up and added to my blanket. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. <sighs> so that is it for spinning. What else did I want to talk about? Crafting. Okay, other crafts. Uh, as you know, I've been, I've just dived into the abyss that is sewing. I've been sewing nonstop. I'm obsessed with it. It's my latest infatuation. Um, so yeah, if I'm not knitting, I'm sewing now. So yay, <laughs> new hobby. <laughs> well, you know, if knitting's a lifestyle, clearly you need a hobby on the side. So, you know, it only makes sense. So I, as you probably saw the photos on Instagram, I sewed another um, dress by Simplicity, the same pattern as I was wearing in the last episode. I'm not wearing it today because I think it's time to put this through the wash because <laughs> I've been wearing it so much. Um, yeah, so, but I have to zip it up actually. Um, there are a couple of mistakes in it, but it's a far cry from the first version that I did. Uh, definitely a lot easier the second time around. And I'm noticing like, the first time you sew a pattern for the very first time, it's gonna take a while, but the second time it was a breeze. And here is the second dress. And I was talking with Molly of the Homespun House podcast and she calls this my Pusteblumen dress. <laughs> or Pusteblumenkleid, uh, which is, if you can see the pattern on here, they're like these little fluffy, or the dandelions, you know, when after dandelions fully bloom, they have these little puff clouds that you can blow, and in, apparently in German, those are called Pusteblumen, um, which is a new favorite word of mine, so I love this dress. It is, I've, I would wear it every day but that would just be gross. So like I said, it's gotta go through the wash today. But I wanted to show it to you guys. So it has the invisible zipper in the back. But yeah, I had to, I had to do the, the zipper was a little tricky um, because I realized that this was not lining up so I had to rip it out and then sew. Anyway, learning curve, learning curve, but I love it. Um, I definitely have a couple more dresses that I'm planning to sew. I have more fabric coming. I ordered more of that fabric because it's awesome. I think I want to sew a bag with it. Um, the pinstriped fabric, which is over there. I showed it to you last week, if you remember or were watching. But um, I think I'm going to sew that next. And then I fell in love. I was browsing Pinterest for a, um, just browsing Pinterest for sewing patterns. And one dress caught my eye. Um, that I must sew immediately once I have enough fabric. It's called the Anna dress and I don't have a photo of it here So if I can I will post a photo right here so you can see it, um, but it's apparently a very popular dress. It's by um, it's called by the company is called by hand London and It's a downloadable PDF pattern that you can download print out. Um, I believe it retails for $14 US and it was nine pounds um, British pounds um, so I printed it out traced it cut out the pattern immediately because um, yeah, it's, it's I, I was in love with it. But um, the original pattern is like a long maxi dress with like a long slit, uh, which I could probably pull off for a, a formal event. But I saw on Pinterest, you can actually, they're, they're, um, you can mix and match the, the top, which I'm the part that I love to death. Um, I wanna uh, mix and match with another, uh, skirt. So instead of having that long fitted uh, sheath um, skirt with the, the slit at the side, I'm going to replace that with just a simple circle skirt. So um, 
Yeah, I cannot wait to sew that. That is going to be so pretty and so fun to wear. Um, and again, I'm probably gonna sew like 80,000 versions of them. So anyway, um, definitely check that out. Uh, if you are not familiar with that pattern, it's um, it's really pretty and I'm excited about it. So yay, um, sort of. Aww. I have not been able to drink tea. It's been so hot out. I've been making iced tea. But again, that takes way too long sometimes, and sometimes I'm just not in the mood to sit there brewing tea and waiting for it to cool down. I need something cold now. And soda and seltzer um, are usually what's at hand. So, um, yeah, <laughs> anyway. And what else? I did pick up um, freezer paper from the grocery store, which is super cheap and affordable. So thank you to everybody who um, suggested that. Um, I've as I mentioned, I've been cutting out stuff like crazy. Um, like here's one, if you're not familiar with freezer paper, it's kind of like parchment paper that you use for baking, but it's um, matte on one side and then there's like a waxy back side and you can iron it and everything. Um, so yeah, here's one pattern cutout that I did for the Anna dress. So it's, you know, it has like a, a bias, or not a bias cut, but it's just kind of like a dolman, um, sleeve and shallow boat neck, if you will, um, if I don't get around to posting a photo in the episode. But um, so thank you to everybody again for all the wonderful suggestions about preserving patterns. Um, I saw a lot of great ideas and uh, clearly I've literally jumped on the, I've, I've jumped on the, the um, freezer paper bandwagon and craft paper bandwagon. And now it's just a matter of finding out how to preserve those. Uh, I saw some that were hanging on a hanger, like a, one of those pant hangers with the clips. So that's another option. Um, but yeah, it's so exciting. I'm super, super excited about sewing. Um, and I'm just really, really enjoying it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> what else? Okay. So I'm going to move on to ask away, uh, the thread where you guys get to ask me anything that you want me to talk about on the podcast. Uh, there is a thread in the Yarngasm Ravelry thread uh, where you can leave your messages and every week I will pick out a handful of, you know, one, two, three questions and answer them on the episode. So without further ado, I will answer the first question. Um, Sunshine Yarn Fun on Ravelry asks, I want to start dyeing with acid dyes, but I have a question concerning pets and their exposure. Is there anything I need to do or be aware of? I know I know to keep the cat out of the kitchen, off counters, and away from dye pots, in parentheses, very difficult with a curious kitty and open floor plan. What precautions do you take with Bella? Okay, thankfully I lucked out with having a cat that just does not care about what I do for a living. She, you know, she looks and then she's like, eh, this looks boring, and she just goes into the other room. Um, but yes, I definitely, if you are working with acid dyes or have children around, you want to keep them as far away from, um, the acid dyes and chemicals as possible. Um, I mean, if you have an open floor plan, I, you know, it might make it a little harder. Um, maybe, I mean, my only, su my suggestion might be, you know, if the cat is sleeping and they sleep for a long time, maybe that's the time that you dye yarn or... Um, I know it's kind of cruel to keep them locked away in a bathroom, um, but what I, the other option is keep everything up off the floor. If you have a cabinet, a spare cabinet where you can keep your acid dyes, um, definitely store them in there. I always keep mine, when I'm not using my acid dyes, stored in a kitchen cabinet um, away from the cat um, so she can't, you know, if she is, happens to be curi curious while I'm not there, she's, you know, she doesn't have access to it. Um, but if you're working, um, definitely keep everything elevated. Um, you know, obviously if you can create shelves on your kitchen, um, counter, you know, while you're working so you can have everything stacked up in front of you. Um, so the cat's not curious about that. Um, but yeah, it might, you know, that would be my best suggestion. Um, or have it, if you can find a toy that can distract her, that she's only allowed to play with while you are working in the kitchen with acid dyes, um, that might be another option. Um, or, if, you know, even if you have a bedroom, you know, that you can place her, you know, away, you know, just keep her in there <clears throat> where it's a bigger space, you know, not confined to a bathroom or anything like that, just, you know, for a couple of hours. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, wow, my notes are 
But that would be my, my suggestion, um, and I hope that helps. <laughs> Sorry, my throat's so, super groggy. I had to take a break there. Um, okay, so Zadie on Ravelry asks, I know that you have taken classes in Craftsy. Uh, any recommendation on a class to learn how to read charts? Off the top of my head, I don't know any um, Craftsy classes that teaches chart knitting aside from, I know that there is a, a class on how to read crochet charts, um, totally different from uh, knitting charts. Uh, but to be honest, you can probably teach yourself to read charts. Um, it is super easy, um, and there, I'm sure there are plenty of YouTube tutorials. But to be honest, if you have if you have the charts, the chart symbols and their meanings um, written out in front of you, and just look at them, um, and just take your time. Don't rush anything. Um, you will pick it up. You it it will just become innate to you within. I would say, as I mentioned. Um, I would try a very, very simple pattern uh, with that, that is written out in a chart form. And if you can get, make a swatch, just do a simple swatch, like maybe one, like two to three swatches and try reading from a chart. I guarantee you, um, you will be able to learn and pick it up and be, be reading charts within a week if you have the time granted, you know. But I would say just pick out three simple, um, patterns that are charted out, uh, lace patterns, and just take your time, have fun with it, uh, and just, you know, you just go with it and trust that you will pick it up. It's like learning a new, new language, but the language is super easy because all of the symbols look exactly like the stitches themselves. Um, so, you know, I hope that helps. I will, I will see if I can hunt down some helpful links with that and post it in the show notes. Um, but just, just trust me on this. Go, trust yourself. You can get this if you just spend a little time and, um, you know, make it fun. Make it fun for yourself. So I hope that answers your questions. Um, and now I am going to move on to shop updates. So if you are not interested in my shop updates, I totally get it. Um, I thank you so much for spending time with me this week and I will see you next time. Happy knitting. Um, but if not, there's going to be a shop update tomorrow. Um, granted, just a little disclosure, um, or a warning heads up. Uh, I will not have any, um, uh, blitz. I will not have any, um, uh, Volca in stock because I had a little hiccup with a FedEx delivery. Um, they have not been on their game this week. I've been home housebound all, all week. And um, the one time I did leave the house for 15 minutes, they managed to come and try and deliver the package and I was not home. But the rest of the time, they just were not knocking on my door or making any attempt to stop by, even though the, the tracking number said that they did. I don't know, somebody is not doing their job and I'm very slightly miffed about it, but yes, that shipment never came. But the exciting news is uh, I brought back some bases that have been discontinued on a limited, uh, on a limited stash basis. Um, so there will be some footsie <laughs> in stock tomorrow, uh, which is a BFL, Blue Face Luster uh, Superwash Nylon Blend Sock Weight. Um, and then I will have Silky in stock, uh, which is a superwash merino slash silk uh, single ply. Uh, so I know a lot of you have been asking me to bring those back. Uh, sadly, I you know I had a reserve, I had a, a deep reserve that I've been just holding off. I had no idea what I was going to do with it, but I'm glad I saved them because, um, and I was glad to be able to use them. So those will be available in the shop tomorrow uh, on a limited batch basis. So um, yeah, so more Volca next week. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so apologies for not having that in stock tomorrow, but you know, it happens anyway. Um, so yes, yeah, shop update tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And let me show you what I will have. Um, okay. I've been busy. <laughs> so I will have more uh, unicorn tracks. This was a one of a kind colorway, but I was able to kind of repeat it because I was playing around a little more, but this is Unicorn Tracks on uh, Strasse, uh, which means street, by the way, in German, uh, in case you were curious. Uh, yes. So, and then I will have um, Stellar Banshee whoops, on, um, on Footsie, the BFL base. And then I will have it also on Silky, which has a lovely sheen. And then I will have Dirty on Purpose on Strasse. 
and then let me see, I'm just gonna put this over here. I don't know if you can see it over there. I will have Octopus Garden on uh, Footsie, and then I will have Behold on Strassa. Let me see, I'll have a lot of Behold on Strassa. Um, I will have Ingrate Orchard, let's see, on Silky and Footsie. And then I will have Fairy Hair on, um, Footsie as well, and I really love the way it picked up all those colors. So yeah, and then what else? I will have Outlander, Out and Under. This came highly requested, so I dyed up some more Outlander. Um, and what else will I have? I will have Afterglow, the new colorway that I came up with. I don't know if I can find it. Let's see, it's so relatively, oh, and I will have Royal Amber, which I have to skein up. Royal Amber on Silky. And then, let me see, succulents, and then, yeah, succulents. <laughs> this is a little bit of disarray. Uh, I will have that on Strassa and Blitzed. Oh, I will, ha I will have some Blitzed, um, <clears throat> but not a lot of it. Um, and then Afterglow, which I really, really love. This, it's a new colorway that I came up with. Um, but yeah, it's like this mauve with like blue undertones to it. Um, yeah, so. That's that. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys can make it. Uh, again, shop update, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and then I will have more Volca and Blitzed and everything else the following week. So um, without further ado, I think I'm going to move on to Kristen's Makeup Bag, the segment where um, I talk about or answer your questions because a lot of you have been asking me about my makeup and beauty regimens and all that good stuff. So. I started a new segment called Kristen's Makeup Bag. So again, there is a thread in the Raveler group. If you have any questions about makeup or whatever, happy to answer them. Um, but yeah, let me see. <clears throat> Paula Shastin on Ravelry asks, your nails are always so colorful. Do you generally do your own or go to a salon? If you do them yourself, any tips? Okay, I do my own nails. It's been so long since I have been to a salon to have a manicure or a pedicure. I just don't, I just find it enjoyable to do my own nails. Um, so here, here's what mine look like today. Um, and yes, I do have tips. Uh, the best thing that I can recommend is this thing called Secha Vite, especially for knitters, because you know, when you do your, after you're doing your nails, you wanna get back to knitting right away. <laughs> Come on, we've all been there. Um, <clears throat> and this thing called Secha Vite, it's a top coat, but it dries super fast. I apologize, my throat is super groggy for some reason right now, it's a lot of talking. But um, such a Vite is my favorite thing in the whole wide world when it comes to doing nails because it dries so quick, I swear, within like three minutes, even less maybe. Um, I can just go like that and it feels dry. Granted, you know, you might wanna sit for five more minutes or whatever, but you can do things, you can type, you can, you know, it dries super fast. So um, aside from having a steady hand, that is, my secret that I can give to you. So yes, I don't even know how big of a secret it is because everyone that I know that knits uses it. So um, there's that. And then um, Amaya Knits on Ravelry asks, I was wondering if you research makeup before you buy, especially the higher end pieces, where do you go for reviews? Okay, generally when I buy higher end things, um, I usually ask, you know, I ask friends first. I said, you know, hey, I'm looking for a waterproof eyeliner. You know, what do you recommend? And they give me their input. So they kind of send me in the right direction. And normally when I go to a makeup store uh, like Sephora or, um, you know, a department store or whatever, and I'm browsing for makeup, they will have samples. So naturally, you know, I will test out, you know, what they have there. Um, but, and one thing that I sometimes rarely, you know, take advantage of is uh, if you go to Sephora, they have an awesome return policy. So if you take something home and you try it out and you don't like it, um, you can return it, no questions asked, uh, which is, I find really, really helpful because sometimes when you're in the store, you cannot, you can't tell like whether something is gonna look great on you. Like with lipstick, for example, you know, I personally don't like putting lipstick samples on my mouth when I'm testing them out in a store. I will just put it on my hand, which is not the best way to gauge whether or not a color is gonna look good on you. But um, I like the fact that they allow you to take it home 
you know, and hoping, you know, that it's going to work out. But um, if for some reason it's just not jiving, you can bring it back and they will take it back and use that as a sample, which is nice um, if it doesn't work out. So that's one option. Um, and but otherwise, I there are the other thing that I look at if I'm buying makeup online, which is very hit or miss. Um, I go on Pinterest or just Google search a color that I'm looking at, you know, like for eyeshadow, because there are people who have the same eyeshadow or lipstick color that post photos of themselves wearing it. So you can kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like, um, which is really awesome. So definitely, you know, search for products that you're interested on Pinterest, on Google, um, and you might be able to get a good idea from that. So I hope that helps, yay. <laughs> so. Other than that, um, I'm just going to move on to blather, but there's not really much to talk about. Um, it's been a busy week. Um, we're still piecing together the, the apartment uh, or the house, I should say. Uh, you know, still kind of, it's coming, it's pretty much there. It's almost there. There's just a few more repairs and things that we've got to uh, figure out, but it's, it's, all, it's all good. We, we, I think we've kind of reached a level of stability and sanity when it comes to holding down the fort. So, um, yeah. And then me and Jenna are supposed to get away in August. Whether or not we will just be going up to the Cape is still TBD. We might make another trip. I don't know where, but you know, I don't know. If we have the time off, we might as well. I would love to just hop on a plane and go to the Caribbean. <laughs> That's my little pipe dream for the summer, but I don't know if it's going to happen. We'll see. Um, but yeah, otherwise this weekend, um, yeah, just, just more stuff, you know, maybe another Home, home Depot run, uh, which I'm tired of talking about. But anyway, yeah, so that's, <laughs> wow, I always feel like the blather section is just so like, because I can't remember everything that's been going on because so much has been going on. And then it's like later after I'm done uploading the podcast, I'm like, I didn't talk about that. <sighs> Craziness. Anyway. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, thank you so much again for spending spending some time with me. Um, have a great rest of your week and enjoy the weekend. And I will see you next time. Happy knitting. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>